Boy Meets World. That is an iconic way to come out, like to start in this industry. That show was one of my favorite shows. I'm sure you've heard that from everyone. What was that like when you got cast on that show? It was such it was an interesting experience because I have to tell you, back when we were doing the show, we did not know that it was so popular and so iconic. Honestly, because there wasn't social media back then and there, you know, there was barely like the Internet. It was just like starting. So when I got cast, I knew it was a great show and it had been established and it had an established cast. And so I was coming into it kind of, uh, you know, with an already running train and stuff, a well-oiled machine. But I actually would did. I was not auditioning for Boy Meets World when I got Boy Meets World because the executive producer, Michael Jacobs, uh, he was uh he was started doing a pilot called Zoe, Duncan, Jack, and Jane for the WB. Remember the, the WB? Um, and so I was testing against Selma Blair, actually, for the role on that show. And Selma got it, and she was wonderful at it. They wanted somebody, like, we're totally different types. Um, but Michael was like, no, I want Maitland for Boy Meets World because they were thinking of getting a a roommate or some kind of girlfriend rivalry for Jack and Eric because they were living together and, and they needed some sort of girl conflict, I guess. Um, and But they had not put out any like you know, auditions for it or anything, but he said, that's the one, that's the one. I want her to be on the show. So I got a holding deal from Disney and Michael and uh, you know the production company. And, uh, and so then that's where it started. And it was like, it was surreal. It was like I was... You know, I had done a soap opera, soap opera before <laughs> uh, for years, but this was like the big time. So, and at this point, how old are you? I was 21, I believe, 2021. 20, and at 21, are you confident in your sexuality or looking back, were you insecure? What was that like? Yeah, I was not confident in my sexuality. I had sexual thoughts and um, desires and fantasies that I really wanted to suppress because I thought I had to be a good girl. And so I, and I had to follow, you know, the straight and narrow and like, you know, do everything people wanted me to do. And back in those days, like Disney and, you know, my parents and like whoever was along the way always wanted me to be this good girl. And I wanted to live up to that. So um, I know I was not confident in my sexuality or my body, even though I was like a twig. <laughs> I, and I thought I was just like so fat and I was so ridiculous. And like I did, I really did. And um, but it, not like terribly so, but I just didn't want to show certain parts and stuff. And then I, it was funny because on Boy Meets World, I showed a lot of parts. <laughs> That's so weird to me because I yeah. remember being little watching that show yeah. being like, she's so beautiful. Like Aww. you were like the like beautiful character on that show to Aww. me. When, Thank you. <laughs> because I was telling someone that I was just getting my hair dyed and I was telling someone I was interviewing you and I'm like, you know, the really beautiful redhead. And everyone was like, oh yeah. Like you, everyone Aww. knew that you were like the beautiful character. <laughs> When you look back on your experience at, with at Hollywood at 21 years old, yeah, especially back in the day, yeah, did you have moments where that you can point to where there was like weirdness from these men producers or directors? Yes, and I didn't at the time think it was weirdness, and now looking back on it, I, it's it's a hard thing because it was such a culture back then, especially with like the Disney culture and everything, to kind of sexualize girls and to have them in these sexual situations and especially my character was always in some sexual situation when you look back on it i was in a food fight with feet and like we were wrestling around and i was p pounding the boys with baguettes and marinara sauce and <laughs> i'm sure the boys <laughs> love that those poor boys <laughs> yeah. but now looking back somebody had a foot fetish and a food fetish but <laughs> um in the in the writer's office or whatever um but also, yeah, and also I choked on a hot dog where Matt Lawrence had to, like, thrust me from behind <laughs> to get it out of my throat. So, yeah. But I don't even know if it was such a conscious effort by any of the producers. I think it was just part of the mindset and the culture. Like, even to this day, um, I don't think that, the, like, the men there, they just thought it was the way that it was. Yeah, because, like, in hindsight... I, I never, I don't, you don't look back and think of Boy Meets World as like this overly risque show mm -hmm. that was pushing too far, right? But like when you talk about, when you talk about these moments, looking back, you're like, oh, that maybe was a little sexualized, but it did, yeah. it felt like part of the culture. I mean, that's a yes. show that we watched when we came home from school. Right, right, right. It wasn't like, whoa, what's on the TV? No, and it was kind of interesting. I heard somebody say it was like, um, they wanted to have like the hot girl on the show and do these things that weren't so 
overt, so overt to the audience, like you say, like the kids and the teens watching didn't pick up on that right away, but it made them kind of want to watch more. Well, I in guess. a weird way, I feel like that show kind of also, and this, uh, this may sound weird, Lauren, like walk some people through puberty a little bit, right? Yes. It's like you go from being like an adolescent to like, you're kind of like transitioning mm-hmm. into a young adult. And that right. show was like something you can kind of watch like, oh, like I'm kind of like thinking these same kind of things or having these same kind of experiences, right. right? So it never felt like, whoa, it was just felt, it felt relatable, I feel like. Right. And you know what? I have to say, Michael Jacobs did an excellent job of not playing down to the audience. He always played up like how they were maturing. Um, so I have to commend him for that. And um, so, yeah, any of the weirdness and stuff, it was just, yeah, it was part of that culture. And like when I had to go into the offices and try on lingerie over and over and over again, um, it, I just felt like it was my job to do that. Are they like beating their meat under the desk? What, like, what do you mean? They're like, no. Hey, we need you to try on 16 pairs of lingerie. Like, I don't understand that you're 21. Yeah, but like, why, why did you have to try on the lingerie? Yeah, why, why, I, you know, I, I want to know like what the reason was. I don't know. Although, um, I think it was that they, they wanted to get the exact right ones, uh, you know, but they were really risque ones and then not so risque ones. And I ended up wearing the not so risque one, although it was pretty risque for uh, Disney at the time. Um, although I have to say, I had a conversation recently with uh, the executive producer, Michael Jacobs, and I have to say we had a long talk about everything and he it was wonderful. So I think we've really come to a good place on that. And and it, he, I, I don't think it was his fault. It was just the culture of Disney and all that stuff that nobody even like saw that things. And what about the cast on the show then and now? Is it is it like everyone's good vibes? Was there any cattiness on set? Was it easy breezy? You know, I would think that it was kind of kind of normal. There was little like, little squabbles and little dating squabbles and like things like that, but it wasn't bad. I think now it's getting a little catty with that with the podcast and everything. <laughs> they're 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 coming down on the show a lot. I heard oh, because I, it's they like just way more did than a, I do. Yeah, they just did like a rewatch podcast, right? Yeah, they're doing it now. Who's and, uh, doing it? Who's who's hosting that? Uh, Ryder and Will and Danielle, and it's it's mayhem over there. Do it's, we need yes, to it's mayhem. I was like, I'm kind of flow. It's funny. Porn has not become the scandal of the Boy Meets World history. Or whatever. <laughs> so um, when you when you look back on your childhood before Boy Meets World, you said you felt like you had to be a good girl. Mm-hmm. Where where did that come from? Was it just something that you told yourself? You said you mentioned your parents a little bit. And did you grow up yeah. out here? Yes, I grew okay. up in Long Beach, California. So, yeah. yeah, although it felt very far away from L.A. because it's it's like I, I said in the book, it's kind of they call it Iowa by the sea because it's very, um, you know, very hometown kind of feeling and away from L.A. So um, I didn't live that whole L.A. lifestyle. But my parents, my parents are wonderful. I'm going to say that they weren't like strict where they were like, you know, doing anything terrible to me. It was just the feeling of, I want to live up to be this good girl. And my grandmother was very religious and she wanted me to be like this very straight laced Christian girl who, um, you know, didn't do anything sexual ever until she's married just cause she has to. So, <laughs> you know, so, um, so, but I wanted to be that girl for everybody. I, I guess I was just that kind of person too. Like I, you know, like the person who wants to just really excel in school and be like perfect and, you know, and I had to live up to that like perfection all the time. And it was really hard when I was having feelings, especially when I started getting older, sexual feelings and feelings about my body and, and people I, you know, I was attracted to or, or things that I thought that I, that I knew were, oh my God, they were so bad. Like everyone in, you know, the church and the com- and community and my family would just like be outraged by it. So I had to just really suppress myself. Before I ask you my next question, I have to ask this. Did you have any off-camera relationships with any of the guys on Boy Meets World? Was there anyone that you like had a crush on? No, you know what? No, I I did not. We were we really were kind of like a family and we still are a family. No matter like family has dysfunction in it and family has squabbling, fighting and and but they still have love for each other, but no, I did not. Um but I it was funny cuz Ben Savage was always like he was always wondering about my sexuality and I talk about that. He thought I was like this sexual being coming in here, like this unicorn. I had the long legs and the short red hair and I was a little older, which felt like at the time older felt so much older than three years older or something. Um, So he would always like come out and, you know, like, what did you do last night? What was your date like? (laughs) What kind of sexual acts did you do? Ben is savage. I know, I know. 
but I didn't take it in a way where he was trying to harass me. He was just interested. He was like just fascinated. So I used to sometimes take little Polaroids of the lingerie because I had a lot on the show um, and put him on his door in his vanilla ice poster. <laughs> I bet he died. Yeah. And he'd be like, oh, you're killing me. You know, what what point did you feel after being on the show that you wanted to explore your sexuality? Did you remember an epiphany where you were like, you know what? I'm so sick of being like the good girl. Like, I'm going to take this a different way. You know what? It was kind of in steps. It was so such long steps. Like I took it just like little baby steps at a time. Um, but I, I always found myself, I'm like an, I'm an exhibitionist at heart and daring, and I like to shock people. And that's, that's shocking to me now because I didn't like to shock people when I was young, but I'm, I found myself, I, I mean, I like to take a little risk and I, I just tiptoed into different things that I was interested in, but I always kept them a secret along the way. What do you mean? Give us an example. Like I wouldn't ever to the public or to fans or to anybody, uh, you know, anybody except you know, eventually my husband or who I was, you know, dating or seeing or doing, uh, doing, <laughs> um, I wouldn't like divulge like that image. I'd always still felt I needed to uphold the good girl image. And it was, it was, I mean, I'm a nice good girl, but good is like such a relative word. I don't, I don't like the word good because you can be good and have hot sex and do everything. Right. And so I still feel like I'm a good girl, but that, uh, that certain image that was, you know, thrust upon me when I was when I was younger. So when you meet your husband, you're not in the porn industry. yet. No. And I met him very young. I met him like when we were together off and on for some years before we got married. I mean, we were very young. Um, So I was not anywhere near the porn industry. I wasn't even anywhere near like being able to admit to him that I liked girls. And like I had that kind of feeling that I was like bisexual or anything. So when did you admit that to him? Like, what was the conversation behind closed doors that happened between you and your husband first to admit that you liked girls and then that you wanted to try porn? Well, he saw, like, we went to and this Just to party. confirm, we're talking about this this guy over here. Yeah, he's okay, over there. there he he's over there. He's over there. Same yeah. guy for, Same guy. yeah, Same all guy. these years. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> I know, we've been married almost 16 years. Wow. I know. And everybody else's marriages break up, but they say the porn one will break up. <laughs> um, um, I think it was he saw me with a girl at at this party uh and and i did some stuff and you know i was a little you know a little drunk at the time but i thought the next morning he was going to be furious at me and he was like oh he was like it's a fine i don't have any problem with that if you i see that you like that and if you want to explore that side of yourself so he was very open to that so the girl thing was fine like is he like explore it with me or explore it on your own it was explored on on my own really um because he's not he's very monogamous kind of person how did you guys have that conversation where he's like i'm monogamous i just want to be with you and you're like well it wasn't ever ever like a real conversation it was just these just knowing each other along the way but that what was the conversation about the girls like at that time when i when he saw me with the other girl but um yeah, it wasn't really like he just was like that. I mean, he just never had never wanted to do that. I mean, if he did, I would I would be open to that. What a guy. <laughs> what a guy. But I can't say he doesn't like watching the stuff that I have with girls on videos or anything. <laughs> That's OK. Yeah, he's yeah, he likes that kind of stuff. Yeah. OK, so once you explore that, then when does the porn conversation come up and what sparked your curiosity? Like lead us down the road of what that looked like. It was interesting because uh, I had we moved to New York actually for a while, and after we were married, and that's that's actually when I was opening to my sex, uh, sexuality and telling him about my feelings towards girls and and how I had all these erotic like thoughts and and desires, and so I started. He he was encouraging of me to start exploring that side of myself. So I started erotic writing, and I started really just. It was kind of like I was talking to the page. And that was kind of my psychotherapy in a way, you know, where I could confess to the page what I wanted and what I desired. And then I could like play it out in my mind. But then I I never really thought that I would play it out in real life, even though, you know, I did have those desires. But it didn't come about until um, the spinoff from Boy Meets World, Girl Meets World came about. And that sounds weird. But anyway, I'll get down the lane of the story of that. But um, we came back to L.A., And Girl Meets World was coming out. And it was kind of a shock. I didn't, I had no idea that there was going to be a spinoff or anything like that. But there was such renewed interest in the cast. And that is when we knew how iconic the show was. 
really. When that came out. How, how many years after out. was this? In the, oh, this what? was in like, oh, was it 2013? Okay, because I'm trying to remember like this. Like 13 then years I after. Then I would have aged out of it by, yes. by now. right. But I, like all these people and all this press, like I remember I went to the set of the, of the you know, uh, pilot. <laughs> and uh, I took some pictures and saw some people. And I took a picture with uh, Bill Daniels, Mr. Feeney. And I put it on my Instagram, which had no followers at that time. It was so, Instagram was kind of new. I had a new account. I didn't even think about it because I wasn't in that mindset yet. But then um, it went on every press site the next day that Rachel and Feeney back on the set again. And it was wild to me that I could have such a connection on social media and then have the press pick up on it. And I hadn't, you know, connected all the dots yet, but that was really the start of me knowing that wait a minute, I can take social media and I can actually do things that I want to do and be my authentic self and have people see me for who I wanted to be because Hollywood was like shutting me out for so many years saying, no, you were Rachel, but you know, you were cute back then, but we don't want you now. You, you know, they tell me you can't be sexy or do anything you want to do because, you know, you have to be 25 or less to do that. And so I was thinking, well, I mean, if I, I don't even care anymore. If, if I want to just like do my, I do cosplay. So I, I wanted to uh, just see, does, is anybody interested in my cosplay, the sexy cosplay or anything or, or anybody interested? Do like, you know what cosplay is? It's when you dress oh, up like comic book characters. Yes. I know about this. I've, I've, okay, I, I know what it is now there, that you say that. Is, I just didn't know a, what the there shortness. Is a, oh, a, yeah. a nerd sci-fi guy at the table. Yes. Don't worry. I know all about it. I didn't know that I could actually have a, like a career in it. When I uh, first you know, started, I was just, you know, I liked for fun. I'm a big Star Wars geek and all. Oh, uh, hold on. Hold, hey, she, she hold wouldn't even watch mic. one of them with me. Oh, so no. It's, uh, yeah. I don't really? like it. What's wrong? What, what are we doing wrong? I don't know. I was just so empowered like, as a kid wrong? by Princess Leia and all of that. I like my dog. My Springer Spaniel would play Chewy because, you know. She, what you're doing wrong. We need a whole other episode, Lauren. Do I need to dress up as Princess Leia oh, in the bedroom? She, I think Princess Listen. Leia is the most amazing princess. Yeah, you should. Hey, I've done it with a lightsaber, so, you know. Are you, like, banging their asshole with the lightsaber? <laughs> no, or is it just it's, a prop? It's myself. <laughs> okay, okay, got it, got it, got I'm it. Being, I actually did a shoot with got Darth it. Vader. And it was actually my husband in a Darth Vader costume. And he and I was leaning <laughs> He was doing it. it was that's so, amazing. Uh, yeah, but then we realized that that's the father and the daughter, so it was a little weird. You know, but what? you know, it there, was just cosmic. There's different strokes for different folks. <laughs> Wait, so so you started dipping your toe in with that first? Yeah. yeah, just just what I wanted to do because I was tired of people telling me you can't be cast for this, you can't do these kind of roles, and they, they didn't even want me for the roles that I had before. And when <laughs> like, you like you were like actively auditioning after just trying to do while. something different. Yes, yeah, for okay. a while, not after I went to New York. Because I came back and I was like, I'm just going to write. And I took screenwriting at UCLA for two years. And I really wanted to write. And I found all my scripts kind of contain these sexual characters, these women that were very empowered by their sexuality. Or they got empowered by their sexuality. So I think that was a real precursor. I think even my my teacher and stuff noticed all these women are just very like dominant, like kind of figures. And they all had some sort of sexual tone to them. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I thought I was going to just write a script for myself, maybe, or write scripts for others. But when Girl Meets World came around, it really, the interest and everything, it was like, I found it really fun to do my social media too. And I didn't like monetize my social media for, I don't, I think like five years. I also think what's so great about you is you are that iconic, like hot woman from, from Boy Meets World. And then you come back with Girl Meets World and all those young fans that grew up with you that are now male adults are yes. like obsessed. I'm just, Maybe women too, both are yeah. obsessed. And I think that that's also like there. It, it turns them on, probably. Oh yeah, I get pe I get guys. Yeah, girls too, but mostly guys say that they, you know, they used to jerk off to me when they were a teenager, <laughs> and now they're still jerking off. Taylor, now <laughs> did you jerk off? I'm sure Taylor did. Taylor, Taylor, I jerked off to, off to everybody. <laughs> yeah, Taylor, everybody. <laughs> Taylor was jacking off to Ben Savage. Ta Taylor, to Mr. Feeney, no. <laughs> Taylor's, yeah, Taylor's a Mr. Feeney guy. Uh, Taylor's a Mr. Feeney guy. So when did you decide? Okay. I'm going to give the porn industry okay. a shot. This is it. Okay. So I kept putting up pictures and I got more and more of a following and everything. And then I have like all, all my pictures started getting taken down just because they were sexy. Like sexy cosplay pictures. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't even showing anything. It was like, oh, they're just too sexy. Like my Snapchats and Instagrams and stuff. Um, so my fans were like, a couple of you know, fans were like, why don't you sell content? And I was like, well, I didn't know what content was at that time. And, but I could sell like, 
you know, nude pictures or do Playboy-esque type stuff and sell my sexy cosplay, you know, and take it off too. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll try it. And I, I'll just, I put up a Patreon page, which is where fans are like patrons of you from, I charge anywhere from 15 to $300 a month for whatever they wanted to do. Um, or like whatever packages they wanted of pictures Give or videos. Give us some examples of the packages. Oh, like I had in the beginning, um, like photo galleries, like all my photo galleries. And I do like special photo galleries of, you know, my cosplay and all the nudie kind of photos and stuff like that. Um, and then like videos, like sexy videos. And it got more into like solo stuff that I would do at first. But um, I didn't realize like the Patreon page just blew up. I didn't even tell anybody. And it had... 20 members the next morning and I was like wait a minute I'm gonna tell people now and then it had like 2800 members by the end of the week wow. so I was like the number one adult creator adult meaning at the time like you know nudes and stuff but yeah so then it started and it I was so empowering to find that I could just have my own business and do my own thing and do stuff I wanted to do and my fans were there for me because I've been told for so long that my fans would never buy anything sexy nobody would and I was like becoming this creator so it was a long process. Um, I, like I said, the solo stuff I did at first, I, you know, uh, I, then I explored that and I was like, I like, I like this. And then of course I, I like girls. And so I was thinking, you know, let's, let's do some girl, girl stuff. And, you know, walk us through your first moment. Well, it's, uh, my first moment with girls. Well, it's funny because I did an international kiss a ginger day, which is a day in January. <laughs> Taylor, write it down. <laughs> but, um, uh, some years before with a, a, a lesbian porn star named L. Alexandra. And I only happened upon her. It wasn't like I was looking for a porn star, but I needed somebody to kiss, a girl to kiss for International Kiss of Ginger Day or just the press. It was a setup. I did a bunch of setups back then of fun stuff and the press would pick up on it. But um, but the, she, somebody found her and said, hey, she really loves Boy Meets World and she's really hot and she's a les lesbian porn star. She's so willing to do this. So we just were going to have like a little slumber party and go... But we ended up like getting totally naked by the end of it and taking these erotic photos and everything and like almost doing it. Uh, so at the end of it, she was like, you're going to be in the adult, do something in the adult space one day. And I was like, no, I, I this is just fun for me now. So years later, I did invite her back for my Patreon and we did full scene. And we also I had an, I had several porn um, actresses uh, who she actually introduced me and it kind of like snowballed from there. So I, it was interesting because I knew all, they were all professionals. So it was really cool to have people that knew the business and, you know, you could trust them because they are professionals and stuff. What, what is the difference between someone who's a professional and an amateur? Like give us, for, for someone, I'm so curious about the behind the scenes of the porn industry. Like what makes a professional? Well, a professional, they really have to know how to work the camera too. I mean, it's not just like having sex. You have to know how to... I guess, you know, put it out there. So you so have to, to be an actress. You have to be both. Yeah. It's not that you're, you are enjoying the sex and you are like having a great time, but you do have to be an actress and, or an actor in, in many ways. Because, do you have to have a huge penis if you're a guy or does sometimes it could be a small one? You know what? A lot of them do. I mean, I've been with some pretty huge ones, <laughs> but, um, but not everybody has a huge one. No. And actually, uh, yeah, it's kind of, Taylor, there's opportunity for you. You have your small one. You could do like Taylor, a micro series. Micro weenie. Yeah, <laughs> micro, <laughs> micro weenie. But Taylor, you got to do that thing stitzel. where you, like, you got you to last a little while, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you see, I'd be, that's where I'd get canceled. We, out, I, I actually to wanted to put you on the spot and ask you this. So our producer, uh -huh. Taylor, yeah. he... Um, he We've has, talked about this openly. Yeah, on the show. he has a, a little bit of problem with um, coming too fast. Well, it's gotten, oh. He said it's gotten, yeah. he said it's gotten better. Right? It's, it's definitely gotten better, but it's oh. definitely again. You know, he's lasting oh. forty-five edging seconds. Work. Like, how That's many the times thing. is he coming in a day? Oh, Taylor, be honest. <laughs> in a day? I mean, well, like in a, Taylor, be honest. If yeah, I, not well, obviously not when I'm in the office, but usually if, if I'm if I <laughs> you can do like please don't when you're behind me. That's for sure. We can't see you behind that screen. How many times? I definitely don't. If I'm working, I mean, it's it depends. Usually in the weekends, maybe, but during no, the no, weekdays. No, no, how many days? How oh, many times? Oh, one. I mean, the most I've ever done it was like seven when I was a little kid. I just went on like a beat oh. fest. Whoa! <laughs> wow. <laughs> what the fuck is beat a beat fest? fest? <laughs> so what? Do you have any tips? Well, that's the way that I was thinking. A lot of the guys in porn, they come so much that it's just you know it doesn't come as fast you know what i mean but i don't know i can't really give you all the tips for that because i they have their own tips the foreign guys but i really think that uh you know edging do some edging 
Yes. Oh yeah, that's worked really well. He's, it, ha- it has. He's, I'm, a, he's, I'm 100%. A, he's a practicing And just so edger. the audience knows, I'm, I'm going to probably not explain it right, uh-huh. but it's basically jacking off until you're about to come and, and then, then stop. stop it. Yeah, that's hard. It's very hard, Ooh. but I think it'll train him a little better. Do you don't need to edge? Do you edge? <laughs> I don't. I mean, I think it's I'm all right. It's kind of fun too. No, though, you're I think. You don't need to edge. I've probably edged in my day, but I don't need to. And I'm not doing it so much. Okay, you know? so what makes a professional, and what makes what is oh, more yeah. when you can tell someone's an amateur? Okay, like you. performing for the camera too. But it's also, I think it's just a mindset too, because when they come and they know it's a job, and like people say, "Oh, aren't you afraid that your husband's afraid that they're going to run off together or whatever?" And it's like, no, they come in, they know they're doing their job, they know how to do their job. They know how to keep it going. <laughs> Sorry, you're both, in the, you're both in the same place. Like you're both, both coming the, for. Yeah, a, a, it's not a, like you're going yeah. out on a date and cheating on him. It's like a setup thing. You you know you get paid at work or whatever, and you you know do this job and then you shake hands and go away. <laughs> do you always come as the woman every single time? I most most all of the time I do because they do know what they're doing. They right. do. Now you can get some people that you know, you know they lose their erections or whatever, and that's that's a trouble. I haven't had that very much in my career because I get to pick the performers that I work with. But there has been an instance where, you know, uh, you know, they they lose it. But it's also hard because people don't realize, especially in my line of porn, because at, I work at Deeper.com and Vixen mainly. So I do very long features. So we'll have like 14 hours of acting. Oh, Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, huh? we don't have short days. No, I'm not doing I do that much totally... edging, Lord. Yeah. No, but we don't do the yeah, sex yeah, 14 hours. How does the hours. guy last? Well, the, no, no, the hour is only for the sex. Got like it. A, but we're acting and doing like fe- scenes and doing everything like a movie would do. So a lot of guys come on the set if they're new and not even on my sets, but all the deeper sets and stuff. And they, they have problems because they're used to doing porn scenes where they just go in and it's an hour or two and they just kind of. You know, they just up. go in, have sex, leave. They, yes. They're not actually doing the but, full performance. Yeah, so it's a lot for them. What do you like better, sex with a woman or a man? And if it is a woman, I want to know why. Um, I like sex with a man better, I think. Women, I enjoy. I, uh, I Of course, I enjoy them. Um, but there's different parts of it. Like, I think women are so, like, sensual and, co- you know, just comforting and soft. And I just love that that part of it. But I do enjoy the really like hard sex of a man, especially when it's really passionate and stuff. I don't like a woman can be passionate, but I I think I get different things from it and different like attractions for it. But I think men, men more, but um, but I love women. Let me let me ask you this: We were talking a little bit offline. We we told you, and we've people that are listening. We've had Lana Rhodes on the show talking mm-hmm. about porn and her experience compared to yours. Obviously, night and day different. She doesn't look fondly on the porn industry. And and yeah. you were saying, and I don't want to put words in your mouth that you disagree a little bit with that sentiment because it sounds mm-hmm. like in your experience, you've had a very positive experience with the, the adult industry. I think it's actually a disgrace what she's done because, and I don't know what's going on in her personal life. I don't know her. I know she did work for Vixen, which I work for, for um, when she started out. She became very famous uh, for working in porn and she was really great and beautiful girl. She made millions from being in the porn industry. She would not have a career if she was not in the porn industry industry and she has like totally stabbed the industry in the back repeatedly and it and it's like she does it to get fa- more fame and more like or she wants to like separate herself to try to be some mainstream person and i just think that's terrible to do to an industry that she could help and she could really give a voice to and uh, you know i'm not saying she didn't have any bad experiences but she has an amazing fortune and career and on and just presence because of it. So, I mean, yeah, everybody has bad experiences and things. And I have, you know, I had weird experiences like in, in Hollywood and stuff, but I'm still so grateful to Boy Meets World and to my soap days and to my Hollywood experiences. No matter if I had bad experiences, I know I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have that. And I just think she's trying to use it to get attention. So your issue is like you may have had bad experiences, but there's a lack of acknowledgement of what the benefit of those experiences. Yes. And she had, yes, yes, exactly. I know that, you know, I wouldn't have gotten the attention if I hadn't have been on Boy Meets World for doing porn. I mean, maybe I would have, if I, you know, but I might not have even gone there. But um, it yeah, it gave you I, like a launch pad. Yeah, I just I don't have any respect for her for doing that. What are the good sides and the bad sides of the industry from your perspective? It's interesting because I have a different perspective because I'm coming at it from a different place. If I was a young girl coming into the industry, it might it would definitely be harder. I couldn't have done it when I was young, um, and I think that you know, especially when they're starting out and they're not at the big companies. Like if they get to Vixen and if they get to the big brands, 
they're going to be treated well and they're going to be treated like like a regular movie or a regular TV show. It, that's It's the same in Hollywood. If you get to the big studios, you're going to be treated like a professional. But if you're tr- you know, you're starting out and you just listen to everybody and you like find a guy to party who says, oh, I, I film porn and here, come to my studio. And it's it's a skeezy studio. And it's, you know, just like if you find some yucky photographer in mainstream or you uh, or some bad movie. So I think uh, I wish there were some, I think, Girls need to be guided definitely when they're younger in the industry. Me coming into it, I had all my faculties about me. I knew what I was doing. I started working with the top right away. And I started doing things that um, I really wanted to do. Like I said, we make the big feature films. So I was able to really find my acting career again and do acting that I never thought I would be able to do because we have full length scripts. I mean, I I did like a three page monologue in, in a movie we did and like had 750 lines and like, um, so it's been an amazing experience that way. And I think I think the pitfalls of the industry are like any industry, especially any entertainment industry, because you can find really bad people that will suck you in and say, oh, I can make you a star and I can give you everything. But it's like they're just trying to use you for sex or for whatever purposes that they want to. I have to ask this question. Is there no jealousy at all? all in your marriage with this like it has there never been an issue and if so like maybe there's someone who's interested that wants to get into the industry that's married like what advice would you offer I think my husband is a very special person in that way he's not jealous of me but I think it's like he would be jealous if I was like going out on dates I think it wouldn't be or you know having having very intimate relationships like with if it people. was emotional and you know what we looked at the porn industry because he recognized he was the one who recognized in me that I needed to do stuff with men and when I was doing my content and I found two great male porn stars who had been in the industry over 10 years um, but from knowing the female porn stars that I've been working with. But he was the one who said, you know, I really think you need to play out these erotic fantasies. You're really good at performing. You need to do this. And I wasn't going to broach that subject with him because I, I just kept talking about like fantasies I had and, and things. Oh, wouldn't this be cool if I had this dungeon and I was hanging here and I was doing, you know, and I was getting caned or whatever. And he was like, you know what? Let's try this. But we actually saw the porn industry or working with porn stars at first as a very safe space for me to, you know, play this out and especially getting established people. Because like I said, they come in, you they do their job. We have fun. We have a great time. I remember before the first time that I worked with actually both of my male talent that I found my husband was talking with them, like laughing, talking about sports and you nothing know nothing jealous ever. No, he was not jealous at that. No. He wasn't. But the way you're explaining it actually in a strange kind of way to me, because obviously this is foreign, makes some sense because I think if you were, if you went out and you're like, I'm going to play these fantasies out outside of the marriage, right. just in the general public with right. strangers, like that yeah. might be like, whoa, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, it would definitely be not before that. Yeah, no. but with this, it's like you're going to other people who know they're there for a job. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. no connect. Everyone's leaving after they're yeah. acting professional. It's a safe space, safe yeah. environment. And then you're also turning it into a business. And yes. you've never fallen in love or liked someone that you've been with. No, I have no, no, but I have had girls that I've had sort of relationships. But he doesn't care about girls. He doesn't care about the girls, no. Yeah, no. So I have had girls that, yes, I've had relationships. I talk about it in the book. (laughs) Her book, you guys, we're going to get to that, but you got to read her book. So, okay. So if, if someone wants to get into this industry Mm -hmm. and they're married or they're not married, what advice would you offer them? I think if they're not married, you know, I honestly, I think you need to find a presence on uh, social media these days. Uh, I think they find girls like who are young who just send, they used to this, I guess, to send their pictures in and they'd call them out or whatever they did. I don't know in the old days. But I really find that a lot of young girls uh, or any any girls, if maybe they're MILF performers or whatever, but if they find a presence, especially on OnlyFans and on social media, on Twitter, and they get a following, then they get noticed and they say, okay, they want people with some sort of a following to um, to really you know hire them for stuff. So if they get noticed that way, that's a that's a really good way to try to build your following. Um, and camming, a lot of girls get it from camming, doing cam shows where they, you know, I don't know, there's different cam sites like Cam Soda and My Free Cams. And that's what I would do if I got into the yeah, industry. Could... I would do OnlyFans because I feel like you can control it. Yeah, oh, totally. And that's what I do so much of my time now, aside from my professional porn career but um yeah my only fans it was and just like the patreon going into only fans it was like such a way to like control my content and do what i want to do and be with the people that i want to be with and show the stuff i wanted to show 
you've done such a good job, in my opinion, and I have a lot of respect for you of how you've gotten into this industry. I think you're very smart about it. Your husband said you're a self-made millionaire. I mean, <laughs> you've done really well. How do you think you've done that? Like, was it their strategy behind no. this? Not, no at the, not at the beginning. No, I think now I, you know, there's some strategy about content you put out and stuff. But in the beginning, no, I was honestly taking an authentic journey for myself. And when I started the content and I was like so surprised there was all these members to my Patreon. I was like, this is fun. Let's 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 take it more and let's like let's do this. And I want to do this and and stuff. And I got to the guy stuff and everything. But my fans, I would not be here if it wasn't for my fans and the press. Because Hollywood was not going to let me in again, like I said. They were not going to let me do what I wanted to do. And it was so hard. And if I hadn't had a fan base from my social media that was following me and snowballing and like saying, we really like her like this and we really like what she's doing. And, and, um, and I think they really recognized that I finally was my authentic self. And I wasn't like playing this good girl kind of image anymore. I was like just showing, hey, this is who I am. And they responded to it. And then... I, the press really picked up on that. So I would be like all over the the news when I had, you know, sexy cosplay costumes at Comic-Cons or was I, I was on red carpets wearing sexy dresses or, or something. So people got to notice me and like they got to see my personality and stuff. But it, that, that's what got me, um, I guess, known. So I thank both of them so much. Was everyone in the cast supportive of, of what you've done, your evolution? And is I, it like a shocker to anyone? They're like, whoa. Or is it like, whoa? I think I didn't really get any response from anyone. Trina did. She she supported me in the beginning. And Will has contacted me since then and, and says he supports me, but won't watch anything that I do. <laughs> and actually, Michael Jacobs says he very much supports me. And so, um, but the rest I have not heard a word from. I haven't heard scandal. I haven't heard like, oh, you're terrible. But I kind of felt like I was just gone from them. Like, just you're just we don't want anything to do with you anymore uh, especially it was with the girl meets world thing i was the only cast member not to be on the show and i wasn't even doing porn at that time i was just doing my cosplay and getting red carpet pictures and doing that so i think you know disney definitely was uh instrumental in not having me back and i don't think um i don't think some of the cast wanted me back either to be seen with me kind of why do you think people are so uncomfortable with sex? Like, have I you noticed that? If I feel like even when we talk about sex on the podcast, like, well, I'll get DMs that people, they're, and they're projecting it onto me. It's their mm -hmm. own issue. Like, it doesn't bother me. But why do you think they're so uncomfortable with the subject of it? Uh, I don't know. It's such a taboo. And it's weird because everybody watches porn, basically. And everybody has sex. And it's, I think it's, it's so ingrained in us that sex is so taboo that we can watch violence all, everywhere on television and movies and stuff. But if you talk about sex or see a nipple or anything, it's just totally scandalous. And it's uh, it's funny because being in the porn industry now, I I just get used to like seeing dicks or boobs or just walk, not even in sex, just walking around or, you know, just seeing you know, scenes on the internet or whatever. And I'm, I think I'm desensitized to it, but I still don't understand I don't understand why people are so afraid of it. I and I I think if they let themselves go more cuz I was afraid of it at one time. I thought I had to do that and live up to that kind of thing. Like like to be oh no, sex is, you know, and dirty sex is not good. And you know there's actually this interesting thing that's happening right now. Um these very feminist women, like very like not are like trying to desex women. It's weird. No, it's actually a phenomenon now. It's and because that the people that you're talking about, if you don't fit into their perfect box yeah. and you're outside the box, then you're out. But how is that being a feminist? I don't understand it. It's like they say that uh, sex, uh, you know, is bad for women, not sex in general, but like, you know, being like sexualized sex being sexualized or like BDSM is just misogyny, you know, in a in, a, in that space. Like it's just a way to. Uh, you know, glorify misogyny, which I don't know. How is it misogyny when I'm beating a woman? <laughs> also, I just don't understand why we can't understand there's different strokes for different yes, folks. Exactly. If someone wants to do that, that's their own prerogative. Good yeah. for them. Go do it. Like, I don't get why what someone else does bothers other people. Yeah, I know. And there's these groups that are really trying to shut down all of porn. And it's that's why I'm so angry about the Lana Rose narrative, because she's she could have a voice and she doesn't. 
And so, um, yeah. Well, it's like some women, and uh, maybe I'll get torn alive for saying this, but some women have made the decision that they're the they're the spokeswoman for all women, yes. and they'll look at you and say, "Hey, you are holding other women back by the truth," even though the story you've told today is an empowering story of basically you taking control of your own life and yeah. doing what you want to do as a woman, right? Yeah. But some people will say, "Okay, well." You can't do that, even though for your life, this is empowering for you. You found success. You're happy, all the things, because you're holding the other group back that disagrees with your choices. Yeah, and it's weird because I don't know why I'm holding any group back because they can do whatever they want. If they want to be monogamous in a relationship and have kids, do it. Like, that's fine. But if I you want to have a poly fear. relationship. It's, it's why so many people have a difficult time jumping onto a lot of these like blanket causes, because there's all these caveats of things that, like there's all these mental gymnastics yeah. you have to do to understand what's OK and what's not. It's like, let's support all women, except women that do that. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Because that's yeah. And then it's like, well, you're counter you're, you're counter to the entire message of supporting all yeah. women because and there's it, carve outs. And it's interesting, these ultra like it's weird. The ultra really progressive feminists and the really conservative right like have joined hands <laughs> to bring down the sex industry. And they are really trying. And they like taking the credit cards away from Pornhub and Bra you know, Mind Geek and all of that. Um, just try all oh, they've done so much stuff, I can't even like list it all right now. But it's just weird that they're joining forces like that, and uh, and and I think their narrative, especially like the really progressive, the feminist ones who want to take sex away from women or take their sexual, like you know maybe different likes and stuff away, they say, oh, it's because it's just feeding into men. But they're always tying their narrative to a man. And yeah, to but them. I watch porn. What is that? I know. I, and how say, does that work? They think that only men watch porn. They they, they want that narrative out there. Only like. Only, sexuality in a woman is only tied to what the male gaze wants. And it's so, so far from the truth. I have so many young women, especially younger women, 20s, 30s and stuff, who come up to me and are like, oh, I'm so empowered by you. And I love, I love watching porn. And, and they like that my kind of porn is like more thoughtful and they can watch a script and stuff. And it's more, um, you know, it's not the pizza boy getting a blowjob. <laughs> all, all my friends, no, all my no, girl hey. friends that I've talked to like lesbian porn too. Yes, I like lesbian porn better it. than men porn because, I, like, just for me, mm -hmm. like for me personally, right. I just don't want to see a throbbing cock. Like, <laughs> I have enough of that from my husband. Like, I don't need to see someone else's throbbing cock. Like, I'd rather watch lesbian porn. Uh -huh. uh, but I think that, like, I feel like some people are just maybe fearful about maybe something in their childhood, maybe their right. upbringing, whatever. They're fearful, and so what they do with the fear is they shut it down. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Or they don't want to acknowledge that they're yeah. having these sexual feelings, right? Because right. like, then it maybe says something about them personally. That's very true. Right? It's weird, like Terry Crews, who I starred with, who I starred with in White Chicks, he has been such an anti-porn person. I mean, he wants the industry shut down, all sex work shut down, because he had an addiction. I mean, seriously. I was just going to say, did he have an addiction? He, ha You know, I think his wife caught him too many times. <laughs> I actually listened to him on Tim Ferriss. I forgot about that. Oh. I, I, I remember he did talk about he talked about his addiction. Well, you yeah. know what I've said? I have like a weird like relationship with porn and I and I don't watch it as much as I used to. But the reason being is like I think the porn plays a place and I think it's great for people. But I think some people like anything else like alcohol or drugs or yeah. anything, if you can you can overdo sure. anything. And if you're not having also real life experiences as like right. a young man or woman, like then maybe it's problematic. But, right. if, but if you're using it to enhance and also like living in the real world with the rest of yeah. us, then I think it's a great thing. Yeah, but, right. And it's, but like don't project your stuff on everybody else. A hundred percent. And like, why can't everyone just be different? Yeah. I actually had, it was interesting, I did a book signing in New York, and I had a wonderful couple come up to me and say that their marriage was enhanced by our, by what we do on Deeper, because um, the she didn't like the traditional porn like he liked, or like, you know, that, so he like said, well, look at this stuff, this is, this is different, this is, be you know, higher quality or whatever, and she watched it, and she says it's the best thing that happened for their relationship, because now they can watch these movies, and like, it's a, I it's mean, hot. it's sexy. Yeah. Like it, it, it enhances the sex. Yes. That's what they, yeah. And it was so nice. That was like the nicest thing people could say. You mentioned white chicks. I forgot about that. I have to ask <laughs> you about that. What was that experience like? That is a fucking like? hilarious movie. It was so iconic. It is so iconic. And it was actually an overall great experience. It was like, I felt like it was going to way to college because, you know, it was the first time I was like, I was out of the country. Like, well, I'd been out of the country, but like all my, own to Vancouver living there for like five months or whatever it was um and it was such a big female cast and then you know the Wayans brothers they're hilarious 
but we all lived in this one place and it was like um this hotel that had like apartments and stuff so it was like these dorm rooms and stuff so it was it was interesting um and yeah at the time with the terry cruz thing he didn't i i didn't even think about that kind of stuff because i was still you know pretty much a good girl even though I, I was starting to be a, and on that on when i was there i started to explore a little bit more i had a few little flings i you know that uh got me like thinking really thinking about stuff and so i think that was that actually being away there i think i think catapulted a little some stuff in me that maybe i suppressed a little more later but i, I it it was there still it was that seeds were planted i bet that was a really fun movie to film it was fun oh my gosh they are so hilarious and um Although it was weird because the first month we didn't do anything. So we all just hung out because the Wayans brothers had to get their prosthetics done. Right. And they were, it was my face and Ann Dudek's face, but they had to get them right. Um, so they had to keep doing test over test. So we didn't, so we were just hanging out, you know. Was to, it weird to see your face? It was weird. And it was funny because <laughs> on Halloween, we were doing it during the fall and stuff. I was like, oh, look it. He's, you know, he's, he's me for Halloween, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's got to be weird. Yeah. Almost like an identity crisis to see It is, that. although I, they didn't look exactly like me. No, they didn't look exactly like you. <laughs> but it is nice try, weird. but yeah. Yeah, I, it wasn't exactly. No, they looked yeah. a little different. They yeah. were a little, little rough around the edges, but but, but that yeah. was a great movie. Yeah, it was really funny. And uh, they've always been trying to get a second one going. I think there was trouble with, uh, I don't know in the beginning. I really don't know the details of it, but I, I you know, I think the somebody said that they had the original idea or so it's, there was problems so it we need a part two i know and they keep talking about it i know marlon like really wants to do the part two Make he really wants to do it that would be so it good. would be great everyone's so sensitive now though i don't know if that movie gets made anymore that's true that is a point yeah. yes oh yeah i forgot about that everyone is so sensitive that's true that is a point i think yeah. we're asking in the ambience <laughs> i think we're gonna swing the pendulum though I feel like we're going to swing with the sensitivity. I think we've gotten, everyone's gotten so sensitive. Yeah, and kind of get to the middle Well, it more. sounds yeah. also, I was like reading some of the stuff on the press about you, and it sounds like, you know, some of the some of the things you have issue with with other people is like the lack of acknowledgement of what porn can do, right? Yeah. So like I saw like even the Kim K tape or the Paris Hilton, like you, you were critical on them, you know, kind of sweeping that aside saying like this was a mistake or like they didn't mm -hmm. want this to happen because there, there's a lack of acknowledgement of what that then did for their careers. Yeah. Oh, it made their, yeah, it made their careers, um, especially Kim. Uh, and so, yeah, and they just want to act like, oh, no, it didn't happen. But I mean, recently. Uh, and it sounds like it's we, more planned yeah, than it was. Than it, it was yeah, it was way planned. Yeah. I was, yeah, they verified it recently or whatever with that, you know, um, saying that she had to do like two takes or whatever. Um, uh, so, yeah, I really think that people like want to use, especially mainstream celebrities. And, and I think the porn industry is very wary of mainstream. And that's why when I came in, they were like, what is she up to? They want to use porn they, for a launch pad and then they want to kind of keep say, porn I don't down. like it. I don't want to. Yeah. And that's that's what I was saying about Lana Rhodes, too. And that's really, uh, you know. So it hurts people that are taking this prof profession seriously. Yeah. And putting the time in. And then you have these mainstream people that come yeah. in, they use it and then they like yes. kind of like diminish it. Yes. And I hope that I... Well, I, I think that I have become like an advocate to say, hey, I was I'm mainstream. I love porn. I have a great time, you know, and I'm I and I, um you know, an interesting piece of advice that I was given by, uh, well, a friend of mine. He said, um, don't ever say you're not mainstream. Don't ever say that. Don't ever diminish that. You're just don't say porn mainstream. You're just an actress. And you're playing a role right now. That's how I think of you. I think of you as an actress. Yeah. I mean, you're playing a role. It's just... It just has sex in it. Right. But it sounds like, in a way, like, some of these characters know that Hollywood will kind of shun them yes. if they embrace this culture. And so the way they kind of navigate it is, like, they're like, oops, that was a mistake, yes. even though it wasn't, because they don't want to get shut out of Hollywood. Right. The, you know, all of the other but people in Hollywood. But you should feel really good, because you're a pioneer, and you're opening doors for other people who are maybe actresses in Hollywood that want to get into the porn industry. Like, this is a unique story yeah. that I think hopefully will be more normalized because of people like you. I hope so. I hope I was the first person to like kick the door down all the way because without having like a sex tape or whatever. Because, yeah, I've been in I've been at Vixen and Deeper for three years now. So it's not like I just walked in and, you know, left or anything like that. And, so, and you're very thought out about the the stuff that you do. Don't you only do a couple things a year? I do like, yeah, I do a few projects a year, but they're lengthy projects. But still. I do, yeah, I do the features. Like, I don't, yeah, if people, some people think, um, 
somebody asked me, do you do like two scenes a day and stuff? And I was like, what? I do like uh, 10 a year. <laughs> like, and but the, then I do a lot of acting pieces in the projects too. So it's a different kind of thing. But um, yeah, I very, very picky about uh, what I do. And um, yeah, and I'm lucky deeper and Vixen like really present me with the best stuff. You have to give us oral sex tips. I just thought you were going to say you have to give us oral sex. Oh, you, yeah, you can give us oral sex. <laughs> we ask every oral guest that. Yeah, give us oral sex. Oh, sex on that's the how show. we end every show. You know what? I there's a couple things. There's one where you like lift the uh, well for a woman. Uh, you kind of like get the clit, and you have to in a certain place at the at the top. You like uh, 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 you flick that tongue, and then you like it's. I can't even do the flick right now. <laughs> uh, it's like a flick, 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 and then you know just let me a circle or whatever like. And also flatten your tongue. Flatten the tongue, like flatten the top part. Flatten the tongue. Uh, flatten it. Like don't it's lizard it's out your tongue and no, point don't it. lizard. You, and then flat. So you like, got to be like really in men, there. Yeah. You know what, men? You know, I different. I find well, everybody likes different stuff, but um, I am really a slobbery kind of girl. So <laughs> <laughs> I like Taylor. To get, <laughs> love. He told me the See, other night he loves a slobbery blowjob. Everybody yeah. loves a Literally slobbery. You got to deep throat it for a slobber because you get that slobber going like. You know, I mean, everybody um, loves a slobber. He told me right? to hawk a loogie on your penis. <laughs> well, I don't know about like, well, yeah, well, let's see, let's let's see what happens. Hawk a loogie, okay, do it. <laughs> That's a tip. But I think really, a tips are to listen to each other because everybody's different. I mean, I had a guy who's a, oh, he's amazing, but he asked me to bite his dick as hard as possible. Oh God. Over and over. What if you accidentally bit it off? Though? Is that oh, maybe he has that... a big dick. I don't think oh, I get my, my teeth God. through that. <laughs> Taylor, it's not like it's too thick like yours. The Raina Bobbit. No, okay. but I mean, no, seriously, you like that. And some people like to like smash their balls or squeeze them really hard. I feel like it could squeeze. Yeah, yeah, but not smash. Maybe a squeeze, not a smash. <laughs> yeah, no, not. I don't mean just like squeeze. I mean like. Like put Taylor, it a... do you like a squeeze? Oh, fuck no. <laughs> You don't like a squeeze, but you like a great slobbery. You told me, are yeah, you the no, one that absolutely. told me to act like I, I'm coming out of an oasis? No, I think that was Weston. No, but I definitely like, like the slobbery stuff. But definitely, <laughs> as far as like, what is it? It's, it isn't there, there's a term for that sort of thing. It's, what is it? Uh, um, I don't where even know. Where it's like they like beat the, some, I remember here someone where like there's there's guys who like women to get dressed up in high heels and then crush their testicles oh, on that, the floor. Oh, yeah, they are, that is. It's, I have uh, not oh. participated in that, but that is a, that's a very fetishy kind of thing though. They like to crush it? Well, well how yeah. does that, does that not puncture the ball? <sighs> I don't, I have never done that. I've never done the deep dive research on that. I've only bit the dick and <laughs> really squeezed it. But um. Yeah, there are things like that they really like, like real punishment kind of stuff. And you know, guys are the ones who want to be the most submissive for the for like dominatrix dominatrixes. <laughs> when you're doing dominatrix scenes, you're are you dressed up with the whip and like is there like a a whole like production behind the dominatrix of I, it all? I've definitely worn like very dominatrix type. Co I'm not a dominatrix where I like fully go into that. I'm more I miss I'm a mistress a lot of times where I'm just very intense and controlling of the situation. Like I had a great scene where. I went into um, a Sex Addicts Anonymous meeting on Christmas Eve, oh, <laughs> and Jesus. I said, "Hey, I want that guy to give up his his, you know, <laughs> not having sex." So I got him in there, and after the meeting, we like fucked on the folding chairs and stuff. So I, I dominate your head. That's like, creative. More. Yeah, it was great. It was I, great. When I was uh, little, I want to say like not little, but like maybe like. 13, I read How to Make Love Like a Porn Star by Jenna Jameson. Oh, yeah. Is there someone like that that you were influenced by when you were dipping your toe in the industry? Is there anyone you look to like that's a role model that you think's done it right? You know what? Well, Caden Cross, who has been, she's the founder and uh, my director and writer at Deeper. Um, oh, I, I stalked your Instagram and I yes. saw she's the blonde. Yes. She's beautiful. She's she was also, a, she's also does the business side of stuff, something, right? Yes. She's like, yeah, she's like the vixen person. She's like, beautiful. Yeah, she's beautiful. She was a major performer for many, many years. And I actually just, I didn't even know who she was at the time, but I fell upon watching a vixen project before I was in porn. I think I was doing content at the time. Maybe I forget what time it was exactly, but I saw this film and I was like, wow, this is the kind of stuff that I would really would like to do if I did professional porn. And I found out later that she directed it. And so we were always kind of, you know, on parallel paths, I guess, until we intersected finally. You said it at a Starbucks. Yes. It start, well, I had done a scene for Vixen for Blacked.com. That was my first big scene. It was, and I, I didn't know at first if I wanted to do professional porn, like to do it that big. 
but I did, and it, it like literally broke the internet. Like I didn't even announce it to the press or anything. It was a viral kind of thing that uh, I, I meant break the internet by actually their site was down for a while. <laughs> And it because of so much traffic. Yeah, so much traffic, and they broke all <laughs> records and everything. But that happened on a Saturday, and on that same Saturday, Caden Cross, who had just brought her brand deeper to the Vixen, Vixen owns all of the brands, like they're kind of like the mother company, <laughs> and so um, she had just brought her brand deeper just four months ago, and she was doing her first big feature. They were putting a lot into this big first full length feature because they hadn't really done that like in that way before. Um, so. She lost her co-star lead, uh, her lead actress, that day. Um, and yeah, it was because, well, I, I won't go, I say a little bit more in the book about how she lost her. But, um, so Monday morning she thought the project would be canned because she was on a deadline to get it because there's an award season deadline where you have to have it out by a certain time. So they were on a big deadline because she had just started with the company and everything. <coughs> So they, she said, I, we're going to have to cancel, I think. And they said, no, talk to Maitland. She's, a, she's an actress, and she, she just broke our sight. <laughs> so that's how she sent me over the script that day, and I was like, whoa, this is such good writing. This is exactly what I want to do. This was the kind of stuff I envisioned, like to have a full script that's fully acted, directed, you know, with high production value. So we met at the Starbucks that day and we like connected and then the rest was history. So uh, yeah, so she's very much a role model for me in this industry. And was the first thing you did with her the most successful or what was the most successful thing you've done out of your whole career when it comes to porn? Well, I think the first thing that we did, Drive, which was the first movie, was uh, I hear successful. The, Taylor's it, fingers typing. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Look up Drive. Um, it like beat Bernie Sanders heart attack my on the Google searches that day. So I would say that was insane because I actually announced that one to the press because I was so proud of making this full feature that was really good. And I said, you know what? We're going to go to the press. And everybody told me they're going to tear you apart. They're going to hate you. They're, you're going to be like just called every name in the book. And I wasn't. People, I had shock headlines, which I expect. And I like sure. I love the press. I know what they're doing. But I was never demeaned. I was never called names. I was actually celebrated in articles by like, wow, she's doing this. Congratulations. Or or it just, it was, I was shocked by it. Everybody was shocked by it. And it just went, it flew viral. Because it's, it's the kind of piece that, you know, hey, Boy Meets World Actress is now doing porn. That's, it's a major thing. So the site just kept, like the subscriptions, which it was a new site. So it just, the subscriptions were just like, Going, going, going. Yeah, going, yep. going, going for days. And so um, that was really exciting. And then right after that, I signed a contract to be the face of Deeper. Good for you. Honestly, your book is so good. Everyone oh. should go get it. Rated X, you guys. How Porn Liberated Me from Hollywood. <laughs> it's available on Amazon. I got it on my Kindle. Oh, yes. Where can everyone else find your book? Where can they stalk you on Instagram if they want to watch <laughs> your porn? Where can they get everything? Oh, yeah. Well, you can get the book pretty much anywhere now. Barnes & Noble, any any it's an, I, it's fun going to the Barnes and Noble and seeing oh, it on I'm the sure. new releases. <laughs> um, and it's funny because I, I said I had to buy one copy when it first came out. And I went to the desk or the front desk and the guy was like, is this you? <laughs> so it was he cute. said that? Yeah, he, goes, he recognized you. Like, wow. <laughs> the best day that guy's had in a yeah, while. Yeah, I was like, wow, I'm seeing one like this. But anyway, yeah, so you can get it anywhere pretty much now. Um, and then um, Maitland Ward, M-A-I-T-L-A-N-D-W-A-R-D at Twitter, Instagram. I have a TikTok. I, I'm not good at TikTok, but I have started one. It's Maitland Talks, T-O-K-S. And it, do people go to OnlyFans to And OnlyFans. Go to my OnlyFans. Okay. I have a huge OnlyFans. I do tons of stuff for it. I do custom videos, which are the most fun because you can get to me to like talk to you and do things for you <laughs> on the videos and everything. So yeah, my OnlyFans is OnlyFans.com slash Maitland Ward. And then, um, yeah, and then Deeper.com is where like my current film with uh, Caden Drift is out and you get to see me do a DP. Okay, <laughs> we're in, Taylor's in. Wait, if you ever need an extra, I can I can play a mechanic, a pool boy, a pizza if delivery you man, a bellhop, you it mention to it. Play something <laughs> to can you humiliate him. Yeah, he, he likes it. Do you I'm down. Do you know, there are guys that like that. No, he likes it. Do you ever need to squeeze someone's balls really hard? <laughs> Taylor's your guy. Okay. <laughs> That'll stop you from coming so fast. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that's the complete opposite of pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you guys go check out her book, Rated X. You are amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank, Thank you for you. doing this. <laughs>